everybody. This is Rhonda Cobb, the Money Coach. And if our little work up here as we were just getting ready to start recording the podcast is any indication, you're going to love this show because we're having a blast. Okay. Now, today's featured guest is so cool. This woman has written such great books and she writes a story that you can really just sink your teeth into sit back with a glass of something to drink or a cup of tea and your favorite little lap blanket and in my case there has to be a little dog on the blanket too and just enjoy a good afternoon snuggle and read joining us today is mary morris she is an acclaimed author and she writes stories that often deal with the tension between being home and being away. But travel is an important theme in many of the stories in her collections, including things like The Vanishing Animals, The Bus of Dreams, and The Lifeguard Stories. But today we're here to talk about her new book. And wait till you hear the title. It's called All the Way to the Tigers. Well, of course... I love big cats, so I was immediately entranced, enthralled. So thank you for joining us today, Mary. How are thank you? you? Thank you for having me, Rhonda. I'm great. I'm great. Thank you very much. Thank you for that um, great introduction. <laughs> it, was, it was such a good book. I was so, I was like, what does she mean? What does she <laughs> mean by all the way to the tigers? I'm like, tigers, mm, I want a tiger. Mm-hmm. So of course right. I Right. Um, well, I, I think a lot of people these days are drawn to tigers and, um, you know, um, obviously Joey Exotic and that whole, you know, debacle with the uh, Tiger King. But, um, you know, I, I view this as kind of a Zen way of looking at tigers um, and a, a more gentle approach to that creature. I think so. I think that the one thing that you'll have to um, expound on for the listeners is how difficult it must have been to write about it and capture the tiger's elusiveness. Well, it's, that's a really great question. And, you know, there were two, first of all, tigers are solitary apex predators. Um, there are no flocks of tigers. There are no herds of tigers. Tigers are alone they are, it's very hard to find them physically in the wild. You don't look for tigers, you look for signs of tigers. And that in and of itself kind of became an important theme in the book and even a metaphor, you know, for what we want in life and what we, how do we find the things we want. And when I went looking for the tiger, it was a real tiger I was looking for. But in the writing of the book, the tiger became much more than that for me. Um, it became well, actually, in the experience of looking for the tiger, but for example, um, all unseen tigers are referred to as she. So if a guy thinks there's a tiger out there, he'll say she's there. And I love the thought that the unseen tiger is always female. So slowly I began to identify more and more with these creatures. And as I was writing about them, yes, I care about them definitely as animals in the wild and conservation and the importance of preservation. But at the same time, it came to mean something more to me. I would think so, because just in reading the book, by the end, it came to mean more to me. It was like, okay, this is a really good story about the tiger, but if you really let it sink in, it's a really good lesson about not being so focused on one thing and really experiencing the experience. Well, I, I love what you just said. I think that's a really great takeaway from the book. And, um, you know, I feel like even in the moment we're living right now, that's just an important lesson is that we have to, you know, the, it, the, the journey essentially is the destination. You know, the things that we're doing, the process of finding is as important as the discovery itself. You know, I say this to my students who, who are writers. I, you know, I say, think about the process, not about the product and not about perfection. Just be in the moment. If you enjoy it in the moment, it'll probably come out good. <laughs> but that's really where you want to live, whether you're, you know, writing or thinking or 
you know, any of the things we do in life, I think it's just really important to fo- focus on the process. Absolutely. Um, mm-hmm. Because if you don't, you you lose so much of it. You know, the and having an adventurous spirit, which you clearly do, um, you know, enjoying the moment is a big part of that. You know, as as a teenager, I was privileged, I guess. Um, I was one of the first women to get a nomination to a military academy, and I went to the Merchant Marine Academy in oh, Great Neck, New York. Yep. Amazing. And as part of that education, they put us on merchant ships for our training. And wherever the ship went, that was where your adventure took you. There was no choice. There was no travel Mm -hmm. agent. There was no Mm -hmm. booking. They said, grab your bag. This is where you're going. See you when you get back. (laughs) Well, okay. Rhonda, go ahead. No, you go ahead. I just want to say what I love about this story you're telling. Um, When I, many years ago, a teacher of mine said, there's only two plots in all of literature. You go on a journey or a stranger comes to town. And I thought about it a lot, and I thought how for women writers, women like Jane, from Jane Austen to Virginia Woolf, women have been waiting for the stranger to come to town. We couldn't go to sea like Herman Melville. We couldn't go to war. You know, those kinds of experiences were denied us. So we didn't go on the journey. And yet you did that. You got to do exactly, and that was my impetus for wanting to travel. That was the thing that got me going in the first place. I didn't want to wait for some stranger to come to town. I wanted to be, I wanted to be on the road. I wanted the experiences. It sounds like you had some pretty amazing ones. Oh, yes, definitely. There were some mm-hmm. experiences out there in the world. Um, you know, the uh, the surprise of people when they saw a young woman come off of a merchant ship wherein for centuries and centuries be- before, there was no such thing on merchant right. ships. Um, right. Just the look on people's faces as you would come down the gangway was enough to make it worthwhile. <laughs> um, Listen, I remember the first time I heard a woman pilot say, this is your captain. I started crying, you know, uh, because like you, you broke a barrier, you know, we've broken some barriers here that needed to be broken, obviously. And now it's just like, you know, you look back on it and you go, I really did that. It's so cool. <laughs> and that's what this book was like for me. It was like revisiting all that. I was like, oh my gosh, I can't wait to talk to Mary because I know that we're going to be like kindred spirits because she did the exact same thing. She was like, oh, I think I'll go there. Oh, so she went. <laughs> <laughs> right. Although I have to say the times I said that in my 20s was different from the time I said it this time because, you know, I had to leave a, a family and, you know, um, not that I needed permission because I'm very fortunate in that, that I, um, my husband particularly never, if I said I have to go to Mars for a few months, he would be fine with that. Um, but you know, I think that, yes, it, it, it's harder to walk out the door than it used to be, but it's, it's great to still be able to do it. Absolutely. So in reading the book, it was so good. And I want to at least give the listeners just a little bit of information about the book. But what do you hope that the readers will gain overall after they're done reading the book? You know, Rhonda, it's really interesting because when I wrote the book, it was a very different situation and world. And, and, you know, the fact of, so to me, I wanted people to think about tigers and look at tigers as the magnificent creatures they are, but also to think about what it means to be a woman and be a writer and be an artist and to be essentially a solitary apex predator, which I think is probably what I am on some level. Um, but, you know, now that we're in lockdown, or at least we're, you know, we're under some you know, pandemic restrictions and all of that, you know, this is a book about having to stay home also. Because the book begins with me having a devastating, it doesn't begin, but I have a devastating accident. When At a year when I was supposed to be traveling the world, I was on my couch. And I, I understand derailment. I know what it means when there's a detour or a derailment, really. Something you plan, something you want more than anything, 
and that thing is going to elude you. You can't do it. And how do we pick ourselves up from those moments and carry on and turn it into something, find the silver lining, find the positivity in something that at the time feels absolutely devastating? How do we get beyond these moments? And I think, you know, yes, I want people to take away the tigers and their beauty and, and, and their symbolism and what they, what they can mean to us, like the importance of, of, of the wild and what it means to still be wild. But at the same time, you know, I was having a pretty good pity party uh, for the three months that I was on my couch. And I, I hope that one of the things that readers take away is that, you know, you can get better, you can be productive, you can go on, and you can make the most, as we were talking before, about the process that you're going through and instead of thinking about, you know, I mean, like, for example, I'm supposed to be in Paris right now celebrating um, my husband's birthday. And instead, we're in a cabin in the woods. And we put together, uh, my, my son-in-law put together a French playlist and we made a French dinner and we tried to like create, you know, a French night here. And it was a lot of fun. I mean, it wasn't the same, obviously, as taking a walk along the Seine, but, you know, just learning to make the most from the moment. So I think my, my connection to the book and what I want readers to take away has, has changed in the last several months. You know, I still want them to see the beauty of the tiger, but I also want them to realize that you know, you can, you can make the most of whatever moment you're in if you know how to just think out of the box a little bit sometimes, right? I think so. I think that, you know, the perseverance and the acceptance of the situations as they presented themselves in the book are mm-hmm. really good lessons for people. Oh, that thank you. You know, you don't always get what you thought you wanted, but sometimes you get truly what you needed. Wow, that's beautiful. And when I I was reading it, I'm like, okay, well, that didn't work out that great, but in the end, it worked out perfectly. And Mm -hmm. it's, you know, it's like, okay, so... Don't freak out just yet. (laughs) Well, you know, there's a quote, I I think it's in the book. It's one of my favorite quotes by the poet Wendell Berry. He says, when we, it is when we don't know what to do next, that our real work begins and we don't know where to go next, that our real journey begins. And I just love the notion that it's when we think we're the most lost, which is of course what Dante experienced when he was in the dark walk of his life in Dante's Inferno that actually that's the moment where maybe we're actually going to be found and find ourselves. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Or you find something that really truly just resonates. Um, While you were out there doing what you thought you were meant to do, you find the thing that you truly are meant to do. Mm, I love that. I just love that. Or as Kafka said once to a little girl, everything you love will come back to you, but maybe not in the same form. Right. When she lost her doll. She lost her doll. You know, I think that's, that's, you know, one, and there's one of the things that my guides say to me in the middle of, of, of all the way to the tigers, which is at one point I decided I actually don't care if I see a tiger. I'm seeing an incredible world. I'm having be- amazing experiences. I'm sick and I'm freezing cold and I'm kind of miserable, but I'm also like there are, you know, incredible birds all around me and these wonderful guides that helped me and, you know, the journey became something else. Absolutely. And sometimes a lot of that relies on the guide. We had a guide um, in one of the ports that we visited. And he was so respectful and courteous. I think he was scared of us. You know, um, We were the first U.S. ship in that port since World War II. Mm. 